Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink, back as promised with the cards that were inspired by the inside of the cards of the videos I posted earlier today. <laughs> I'll have a link to that video at the end of this one if you haven't seen it yet, but I am using my all-time oldie but goodie favorite Simon Says Stamps Beautiful Flowers stamp set. I have done a ton of videos using this set. I have an entire playlist of all those videos here on YouTube. I'll have a link to that as well at the end of this video because there's just so many different ideas and ways to use it. So I have my card base in my Misty and I use some post-it tape to mask off where the score line is. I've positioned this big old stamp and it is stained, so stained. Like you cannot, like the stamp itself has basically turned black at this point. It's fine, works fine. So I'm inking it up with three ink pads. I am using oxide inks for this, Distress Oxide inks, and I'm using Mustard Seed, Picked Raspberry, and Mermaid Lagoon. I started with the Mustard Seed when I inked up the stamp, and then I went over Picked Raspberry at the top portion and Mermaid Lagoon on the bottom portion, and I overlapped them so they mix and create a rainbow. It's so simple. I've shown this in other ways um, and using like a brayer and different other colors. Like it's such a fun little technique. It does, especially with pigment inks, and it's obvious, it will um, show up on your ink pads, but I'm going to show how I deal with that after I get this part done. So after I had stamped the front of the card without re-inking the stamp, I had flipped the card base over so that I had the inside of the card facing up and masked off the score line again and then just pressed the stamp onto the inside of the card and got a second generation stamping of that. So just a lighter version, which is perfect for the inside of the card. So then I repeated the process a second time on a second card base, because again, why not when everything's sitting out? So inked up the stamp, starting with the mustard seed, and then the picked raspberry, and then the mermaid lagoon. Stamped that on the card front, and then I just flipped the card base over. So now I have the inside of the card. I'm masking off where the score line is with just post-it tape that I reuse until it gets too inked up or teared or, you know, all the things. I always just keep my 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 masking post-it tape pieces like stuck to something on my desk and again I reuse them a million times. So you can see the lines on my ink pads and I pay attention when I'm inking up the stamp. I, I hold them in the same way so this so it only shows up on one side and I'm not contaminating and I'm using like air quotes my ink pads. Because yes, the other colors are getting like that mustard seed is getting into my picked raspberry and my mermaid lagoon. I don't worry about it too much. Usually if I'm, I do this like once and there's a bit, I'm just like, eh, move on about my day. I don't worry about it. But I've done this a lot in the last several videos. <laughs> so there was quite a bit of that other ink in there. So all you need to do is take a little bit of paper towel or a baby wipe. Um, you know, my Costco plant-based baby wipes or whatever that I use in crafting. And I kind of soaked up a bit of that ink where on the edges. And then the other thing I did here was I just smushed them onto a non-porous surface to really like kind of just mix up and break up and push, you know, the contaminated color a little deeper. And then I swiped the ink pads to kind of re-pick up that color. So I'm not just wasting it. In the end, if, you know, if I keep doing this technique and it really keeps contaminating ink pads, I will just save them for this technique and actually just get a couple more new ink pads. I'm not even at that point yet though and who knows when because really after I use up the ink enough I'll when I re-ink those ink pads it'll be fine. So I just thought I'd point that out. I don't worry about it too too much um, but yeah. yeah again you notice it more with things like these oxide inks anything with a more like a pigment in it because the colors will show up more and sit more on top of the ink pads which is actually makes it easier to remove them. So after I was done you know, cleaning off my ink pads. I taped these cards closed with just a little piece of like washi tape, you know, just to keep the splatter from getting anywhere else. 
I want to add a light amount of splatter. That's why I'm just using a regular paintbrush and not my fan brush. Because when I use my fan brush, I get those nice big, big blobs of splatter that I love. But I didn't want that on here. I'm using black soot distress paint and I just wanted a bit of splatter. Not a crazy amount. <laughs> you know, just to give it that texture that I love, but not overwhelm the cards. So I did the splatter, set those cards aside to dry. I immediately washed my paintbrush and my little palette and everything because uh, distress paint is permanent when dry and especially the black soot paint because it has such a heavy like black pigment content in it. I immediately wash. Like it's amazing if you take, you know, a bit of soap to your brush after doing things like splatter or painting with it or whatever, like just how much is in that brush. So anyway, did all of that. And then I put a piece of black cardstock in my Misty and I stamped this outline loved stamp from the beautiful flower stamp set. So I used my anti-static powder tool and I stamped the sentiment with clear embossing ink, coated it with Simon's detail white embossing powder, melted that with my heat tool. And of course I did this twice since I'm doing two cards. And then once that was melted, I trimmed these down with my paper trimmer. And then I took those same ink pads and my little like plastic palette non-porous surface and I'm going to smush just the edges of the ink pads onto this. It doesn't, I don't need a whole lot because these are small. So I just smush these onto there and then I'm going to use just my little water brush. You could actually just use a regular paintbrush really. I was like off camera. I have a little absorbable cloth that I use especially when using a water brush because I have a love I think we all have a love hate relationship with water brushes. It's like sometimes they work beautifully and then other times it's like and don't squeeze them like you know because it, it but even without squeezing them you know they'll just like pool water that can be ridiculous but I love my little water brush. So I just keep a cloth off to the side and I will, I use that to clean it, like to swirl off the color before I go to the next one. But I also use that to absorb any excess water, especially with this, because I don't want a lot of water. So I'm just picking up the colors and painting them into the open areas of these words. And I'm going in rainbow order. So I started with that picked raspberry and then I mixed the picked raspberry and mustard seed to create an orange and painted that. And then I paint the mustard seed just as is. And I keep going back and forth because I keep doing this in layers because oxide inks do show up on dark cardstock, but this is one black cardstock and it's also very small little areas and I'm using a water brush. So I'm just... I just keep, as it dries, I just keep adding more layers. So after I painted the, the mustard seed, I mixed the mustard seed with the Mermaid Lagoon to create a green. So I painted that. And then I used the Mermaid Lagoon as is to get my blue. And then I'm going to mix the Mermaid Lagoon and the picked raspberry to get my purple. And again, and I think even off camera, I ended up adding a couple more little layers to this to just intensify those colors because I really wanted this sentiment to kind of stand out. So now I've got my um, card bases, that splatter has dried. So now I'm lining up more sentiments from the beautiful flower stamp set onto the inside of the cards. I'm a big old head with my hair just piled on top. I, I look, yeah, like a crazy person half the time. <laughs> and I always forget that yeah, it gets in the way of the camera. But anyway, I got those sentiments all lined up nice and straight. So then I could ink these up with VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink, stamp those on the inside of the card. And then I lined up the loved sentiment on the outside of the card and then grabbed the little companion sentiment and got that lined up. And I'm going to ink that up and stamp that with the VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. So these cards are going to be complete one layer cards. So that's why I was kind of trying to take extra pains, like having my bamboo paper towels in my splat box and taping the card bases closed, etc., to try and um, keep me from getting, you know, smears and fingerprints and all that stuff. <laughs> it's usually why I like doing the layers, you know, because you can cover things. It's amazing. Like for a clean and simple card, a lot of times more thought and effort needs to go into it, at least for me. Um to do clean and simple just because I'm working against my klutzy nature. Anyway, anyway, back to the cards. 
So I used Simon's Big Mama foam tape, which is nice and thin. I put that behind these loved sentiments. So it gives it that little bit of dimension, but not a ton. And then I went through my stash and I have these Trinity Stamps Soapy Bubbles Confetti, which funny enough, I actually had in my cart. I was going to order these because I saw them in... I think it was a Kelly, a video Kelly person did for Simon. I love her cards. Her cards are beautiful. Oh, but she uses these a lot. And I was like, Ooh, I need to get these. Yeah, I already own them. <laughs> anyway, the cool things about these sequins is they're iridescent. So they're gorgeous. They don't have holes in them, which for me personally, I, it doesn't bother me, but I know it bugs a lot of people to adhere sequins to cards that have holes in them. So these don't FYI, they're fabulous. So I adhered some of those. And then I decided, and I could have done this in the beginning, instead of using my water brush, I could have just used this, but hindsight, whatever. I used my Nouveau Aqua Shimmer Pen. This is just the clear one with all the shimmer. And I painted it carefully over the loved sentiment. It's going to actually make it look a little more pastel. In real life, you can still see the color really well, but it does look a little more pastel because of the shimmer, but it also draws more attention to the sentiment and the glitter fabulous love it so and I, of course i will turn the flashlight on my phone and show you guys as wet as best as i can so once i finish that let that dry i paired these cards with some black envelopes and just oh, shimmer the sequins are fabulous but like the glitter on the sentiment it's so hard to pick up because you know it's small but it's just it's there and it's pretty and i've got the rainbow you know so these cards like I have in the title, these are great for Pride, which, you know, Pride Month starts in a couple of days. For me, it's all year round. Huge, huge supporter, you know, advocate, all of it. I am an ally. And I love that this idea kind of came to me, but like this set is perfect for it. It's not, you know, a Pride set. And yet the sentiments, inking it up in rainbow colors, it just works. And this would work with so many other stamps too. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. And as always, I will have links below the video to my blog post. I'll have links to all the supplies I used. I'll have the playlist linked here and all the good stuff for you guys to check out if you missed it. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting. And I'll see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.